Hey everyone, this is uh, Elite Gaming's first video for Star Wars The Old Republic. A lot of people may know me from the videos I did in DC Universe Online. Uh, this is just an introductory video to Star Wars really, giving an overview of one of the, well, low to mid level flashpoints. This flashpoint is recommended for around level 21 but can definitely be done around 19 um, with a well organised group. And we have a tank that's 23, a healer that's 23, and two DPS at level 21. What I aim to do here is just give an overview of the main tactics so people know where they're going in it, and the other aspect of this is just for people to see what Star Wars is like in group encounters. So the first thing is, um, you'll see this hole here. Um, it looks like there's an interactive button here, but for some reason it doesn't work. We don't know why. I'm um, not going to investigate why. Instead, just drop down onto the elevator and drop onto the next platform and then drop down again. You may want to heal in between, or you can do what Vex and Wormbolt do and drop straight down and lose the majority of your health. When you drop down here, you'll notice that there's an objective to pick up some explosives and also an objective to sort of move through the instance according to the map. If you've got someone with high enough archaeology rating, you don't need to get the explosives. They can open the door without it. It saves a minor amount of time, but it's worth noting, I guess, if you want to get through instances quickly. If in doubt, doubt though, just uh, pick up the explosives. That's the best way, uh, rather than waste any time having to run back. I'll be back with uh, some more voiceover as soon as the first boss, uh, more next set of tactics, uh, comes up in the video. Enjoy the video for now. Okay, at this point you use the explosives that you've collected earlier, or if you've got someone with archaeology and a high enough skill level, they can open the door. Okay, so we're at the first boss now. Um, pretty simple boss, to be honest with you. If your tank just goes in with a force charge, or, well, sorry, that's a bit juggernaut biased, but if your tank goes in and hits an AOE ASAP to grab the aggro of the adds, it's pretty much tank and spank from here. The only thing you have to be aware of is adds do spawn throughout the fight, and generally adds will run to the healer because they'll be quite high on the aggro table. Um, 
if the group can let the tank get some aggro first of all by AOEing the adds, um, and then if you all focus the boss, the boss, uh, the tank should just be able to focus uh, aggro on the boss and then pull the adds as they get to the healer. Your DPS just needs to keep on the toes and make sure they clear the adds first and then back onto the boss. Other than that, it's a really simple fight and that's all you really need to know.
And now it's time for the second boss. This boss is slightly more difficult, I guess, um, but it's a pretty fun fight more than anything, so it's not just tank and spank. So first things first, the tank needs to go in, let the adds come to him and hit an AoE down. Then your DPS can come in, clear up the trash, and the trash is just trash, it's nothing harder than that, um, and get them down as fast as you can. If your DPS goes in first, don't worry, Vexred does this here by accident, your tank can still get aggro pretty quick, and the adds shouldn't, shouldn't do too much damage to the group. Um, one key mechanic to note here is the knockback of the boss. There are cliffs around. If you get knocked over the cliff edges, you get knocked into adds. Um, the knockback is big and can do this. So if you can position the group behind the boss as best as possible, uh, then you're not going to be risking getting knocked off the cliff into adds and then pulling a load of adds onto the group and probably lighting them. The tactic that we use is we start to pull the boss to the right, um, the group will never be facing near the cliff, so generally the knockback then won't be so dangerous. I'll gradually pull the boss to the right where there's a wall. The faster you get into this wall, the better. The reason for this is every knockback will just knock you back a few feet into the wall um, and you'll be back there. Your group can then sort of get around you, um, again preferably to the right side of the boss rather than the left. And this also makes it easier for the tank um, because the adds will come close to him rather than being spread out and having to be running to him here. Best thing to do when the adds spawn, because they do spawn throughout the fight, is when they get to you, let your tank hit an AoE. Again, Vex has managed here to knock them back um, and be a real pain for me tanking, but that happens. Um, and he didn't realise that I was trying to AoE tank them. So as you can see, there's the sort of safety wall now coming up on the left of the screen. Um, camera's just spun so that doesn't help you that much but yeah the ads are around me just hit a few AOEs and let the DPS clear them up more ads come if your group are behind you because the healer's generally going to get aggro it makes it much easier for the tank soon as they're starting to come past you hit them with a movement speed um, slow or just hit them with any AOE you've got get as much aggro as you can and then let your DPS burn them down they shouldn't cause too much um, damage they shouldn't wipe the group just handle them well like I say if you've got the group near you or behind you, that's great, because they're going to path straight across you, hit an AoE, and then back to the boss and burn it down. Other than that, they're the two main mechanics, so just enjoy the fight and bring him down as fast as you can. But like I say, focus on the adds, let the tank get aggro of the adds. He shouldn't lose aggro of the boss that often, even if he switches to the adds, um, and you should be fine. It's all about positioning and focusing your DPS on the right targets. Okay, at this point you're faced with a blocked door straight ahead or a slightly longer run round to the left that isn't blocked that takes an additional 5-10 to ten minutes. We're not sure if the explosives can open this door as we haven't used them, but with a high enough level archaeology skill you can open the door.
Okay, when you get to this point and there's a couple of ads clear and these are quite tough, well, they don't hit too hard but they do have a lot of health, just wait for the Roma to pass if you've got there in time. Um, he'll either be passing to the left or potentially later on he may be passing to the right if you've took a while to get here. Either way, if you just let him pass um, and clear this ad, if you take a long time to clear this ad, don't worry about it. There's a long path back um, for that boss to come back to. Other than that, just uh, clear this ad once the roam has passed and then move on into the next room. Okay, at this point, this is the penultimate room, you're going to face two mobs. If you can CC the one on the left and then take the one on the right, or CC the one on the right and take the one on the left, you may have a little bit of overlap, um, but if not, anyway, if nobody damages the one that you've got CC'd, hopefully it can just be re-CC'd and you can carry on burning down this one. You will be able to take two, but potentially, depending on your timing in the instance, there'll be three. So having one CC'd um, does help you out a lot, and if you can keep it CC'd while you burn down the other one, it should be an easy enough room for you to handle. If not, they'll both aggro together, um, even though it looks like there's a large aggro range, they are almost, it seems, they seem to be tethered together, so you'll aggro both if you aggro one. So let your CC get in first and let, then let your tank build some aggro on the other. And now you're on to the final boss. Uh, it's a pretty simple boss and there's only one key mechanic to remember. First of all the tank goes in, just build some aggro then the DPS can follow and start burning the boss down. The one mechanic you need to remember in this fight is when the boss disappears, which you'll do intermittently in the fight, four fireballs will appear. Two appear at the top of the stairs and two near the door that you came into. Those four fireballs will aggro one person in the group. Uh, so the aim here is to keep the fireballs away from the group and also keep away from the person who it's aggroing. They do do damage to you if they hit you, so make sure you maximise your range. Best thing to do is when the boss disappears, stack up at the bottom of the stairs. This maximises the range between the fireballs and your group. Then when they spawn and start coming towards you, spread out a little bit along the bottom of the stairs and work out who's got aggro of them. Whoever's got aggro then needs to kite the fireballs around the group. You can work out the position in the room, if you jump over for example the edge it's going to pull all the fireballs to one side and then you can get them into quite a good position. You'll only have to kite them around for a few seconds once the boss has spawned. Once the boss does spawn he should aggro back on the tank as long as his aggro table's high enough um, and 
the three remaining members of the group can just DPS the boss down. As soon as the fireballs disappear, the kiting uh, member can then just come in and hit the boss as well. That tactic works as long as it's either your two DPS or your healer that has got the aggro of the fireballs. Only thing to remember if your healer's got aggro is you're going to be taking less healing as a tank, so pop any defensive cooldowns that you've got. Um, the exception here is if your tank gets aggro of the fireballs. If your tank gets aggro, that means he's likely to have the boss and the fireballs to kite. In that case, just remember that the boss does stun frequently in the fight. When he stuns you, if he stuns you while you've got fireball aggro, the fireballs will probably reach you. The best thing to do is sort of have the boss as a secondary priority and kite in the fireballs as a primary in that case for your tank. Just maximise your range on your fireballs, then at least if you get stunned, you're only going to take minor damage if they reach you and they may not reach you at all. Um, once you've been stunned once, they should fade sort of a few seconds after that she shouldn't shouldn't have to worry about it happening again and just carry on kiting then as soon as the fireballs disappear again just back to dps in the boss down well that's the end of this video i will let it run and um, we hope it's been helpful it was only our second run through here so it wasn't a perfect run by any means whatsoever and um, just hopefully this gives people an insight into the flashpoints of star wars and also gives people some help if they're struggling with athis at all uh, hopefully we'll see you in the future with some raid guides as soon as we get up to level 50 and start getting them done. Uh, best of luck and enjoy the game.